Hello, um, in this video I'm just going to show you how to wire a circuit with a two limit switches and a motor. So I've got an example of what I want to do here. So we have this, if you look at this, is a remote controlled robot and it's got something that revolves on the top. So you see you've got this platform here sits in on top of it and when it revolves one direction it should hit one limit switch and when it revolves the other direction it hits the other limit switch so we can control it with our micro bit and our Kitronics robot robotics board here and if you press a you'll see it moves one direction and it'll actually just stop when it hits the limit switch there if we press b it'll reverse and it'll hit the limit switch on the other side now this circuit has also has the advantage that it doesn't keep you don't need to and um, the motor won't move unless you hold down circuit a or button a or b so if you press b you can actually micro control the movement as well so you see it goes left and right so um first of all i'm just going to go on the diagram how to wire this up so if you look at your kitronics motor board there should be a breakout section at the bottom there and you won't be able to see it fully clearly with this, but if you just look at your own, you'll see that there's different numbers on this, and they correspond to the different pins that are connected to your micro bit. Um, and there's three of them pins that you're able to actually easily put, put commands in through. So just to check out, how would you actually solder up your wire, your micro switches first? So you get your two micro switches, and um, for this program that I'm doing, I'm going to get you to connect it to the normally open and the common. So that just basically means that that is working as an on and off switch. So it's normally open, meaning that it's constantly open, it's constantly off. And when you press the button, it turns it on, it sends a signal through it. And um, so you can see the way I've the switch is set up here as well. You've got, I've got a 2D and a 3D diagram. And um, so you can see that's just a, a view just from looking down from the top. So you have that turning, hitting this limit switch, and then when you press button B, it goes back. So button A, it goes this direction towards P0, and button B, it goes back towards this direction. Now, I will be showing you, and I'll come out of it here just to show you what we're aiming towards. This is the actual code done here. Out, but um, we need to actually understand what's going on before we can write this code. And um, I actually found it easy just to do out a diagram on a piece of paper. I'm going to show you how to do that on this presentation here. So what you need to do is you need to program what's happening at every second, every, every state that your thing is in. So what I mean by that is, see this bar here? Imagine if this is pushed all the way in pushing P1. So it's pushing in that limit switch. What do we want to happen right then? So when it's touching that, so we'll start off, uh, it's, it's touching that and I want to move it the other direction. So you can see I've done this chart out here. And just to explain it, first of all, all of these numbers, one means that the switch is pressed um, or zero means the switch is not pressed. So it just, instead of on and off, I've put in ones and zeros because it's, that's how things people write digital circuits when they're doing them. A one is on and then a zero is off. So let's just start at the start and we're going to move through the whole sequence. And the reason I'm showing you this, you could just copy the code that you're doing out, but if you can understand how to do this, you can change this circuit. So for example, you might want to make a circuit where it's going to rotate, hit one switch, wait two seconds and then rotate back again and continuously rotate over and back. You can do that with this as well if you understand what's going on here. So when you press button A, so you can see from our diagram here, we want button A to move this switch across this way. So at the moment, it's touching P1 and we want to press button A to move it. So we want it to start moving when we press button A. So button A is on, button B is off, Limit P0 is off, that's this one, and then limit P1 is pre is on. And we want our motor to move in reverse. Then if we change that, we go button A, we're, we're still pressing button A, but what has changed here? When this starts to move away, it's no longer touching P1, but we still want it to move. So you can see in this one, we've got one, 
Button B still isn't pressed, limit, and neither of our limit switches are pressed, but we still want it to move in the reverse direction. Go down to our next one. Button A has been pressed, but then it finally comes around and it hits P0. We want our circuit to turn off. So um, in this one, button A is pressed, button B still isn't pressed, limit P0 is pressed, limit P1 can't be pressed because you can only have one pressed at the same time, and then our circuit's going to turn off. Then you take your finger off button A, what you want to happen? Well, it's going to stay off still. So even though P0 is pushed in, it's going to stay off here, but button A is pressed. Now, when it's resting at that position, we're going to go in reverse, actually, which is a little bit confusing because I've put it in for, as forward here, and that, that's just the way I had to do it on my program. That was the direction my motor was turning. So in this one, you're going to have button B pressed, it's going to be touching P0 and we want it to start moving forward. Then when it moves away from this switch, this switch is going to become unpressed and uh, button B is still pressed and it's going to keep moving forward. Then when it comes here, button B is pressed and when it hits P1, we want it to turn off, even though we've button B pressed. And um, then I just added in, so then after that, P1 is pressed, button B is off, but we still want the circuit to stay off. And then finally, this last bit of code is the thing that allows us to, when you take your finger off the button, the whole thing shuts off, which is good because it allows a more accurate control of the thing. We'll say that if nothing is pressed, if there's no buttons pressed at all, we want the, the thing to turn off. So now I'm going to just show you how that's going to translate up onto your micro bit make code. So you can see that I've got the actual coding done out here. And um, let's zoom into it. And the way I have it set up is I've used a logic. And I'll show you how to actually put this together in one second, but I'll just explain what is in here first. So you've got button A is pressed. So if we took our first, uh, our first one, it's one. Uh, button A should be one. Button B should be zero. Pin zero should be zero and pin one should be pressed, which is one. So um, if that's confusing, maybe just look back, pause the video and just go back and look at that chart that I had up on the screen there. In fact, I'll just flash it up there for one second just so we can have a quick look at it. So what we're trying to do is just replicate this here. So if you feel free, just take a screenshot of that there now and you can just put it up on the screen while you're working. Or, you just, or even get a pen and pencil and just write it down. I think that's the way I worked with it. Um, so we go back over here and we'll see that we're replicating that. So this is one, this is zero, zero, and one. Now I'm going to show you how you can actually build that code together. So we're going to put all these in the forever block, first of all. So if we go from, I'll actually start this just from scratch. So we for, the forever block here, and I'm just going to show you how to do one of these things. And um, so what you do is you pick out your logic gate and you click the if true is one. So you put that down there. Now we're going to start putting in all these things. So um, you go into logic and then you're going to connect, get an and gate because we're going to have and all of these conditions have to be met on each line. And what we're going to do is just going to control and C to copy that and then control and V. And we'll just paste that a couple of times. And we're actually going to link all these AND gates together. So we need in total a, four, a total of four inputs. So if you drag that up there, this up here, we've got one, two, three, four things together. We don't actually need another one. That's enough there. So I'll actually just delete that one. And we drag this entire new AND block that we've built. And we just drag it into this true box here. So when these four conditions are met, then something will happen with our motor. So let's look up at our first one. And um, if we looked at our chart, it says that we want the motor to move in reverse for our first condition. So you go into your robotics extension. So if you don't know how to find this, um, maybe look at some of my own old videos on using the robotics motor board. And then you just get motor. And we'll say motor is going to work in reverse. Depending on what you, you might actually need to test your model, you might want it to go forward in this case. So it just depends what way you actually have the thing wired up, what way you want it to move. So the next thing we want to do is put in our button. So these are our inputs. So we have button A, 
and then we've got our pins as well so you can do a total when you're doing it this way and i'm not sure there might be another way to do the other pins but as far as i found it at the moment i can only do it with three different pins you've got an option between pin zero pin one and pin pin two and um, so we'll control and see that and then control and v so we can use that same thing again same with this one control c control and v so we're going to have button a then we're going to have button b then we're going to have pin zero and then we're going to have pin one they're the the four different conditions that we had on our chart if we were looking across here button a button b limit p0 and limit p1 and um, you can label them any way you want that's that's just the way i've done them so what we want in our first code and if you refer back to your chart we want button a to be on so button a is pressed then for the next one button b is not pressed now we need to go back into our logic gates here and you're going to find the not symbol here so we're going to say button b is not being pressed at this time then you're going to put in p let me see our next one p0 is not pressed so we need to do the same thing again so p0 is not being pressed and p1 is pressed and sorry, my AND gate must have just fallen out there. So I'll just drop, drop it back in there again. That's just happened because I'm not dropping it into the right box. I'm doing it in the overall one as opposed to the inside one there. Okay, so that's the first line of our code done. So you're going to work through that for all the different one so you can see the next one is going to be button a is pressed button b is not pressed pin zero is not pressed and pin one is not pressed as well and they're all going to correspond with this chart that i've just done out here so i'm just going to show you how you can actually do a second one of these and then after that it's up to you to look at that chart write it down with a pen and paper and you're just going to repeat the sequence down but um just to show you how you can do this quickly without having to drag every single thing out again what i would do is i could control and copy that entire thing and then i would control and paste it down there so for our second line we want one zero zero and we also want our motor so we can we don't need to change let me see throw it in there so we can see it we don't want to change this we want our motor still going reverse when you do get to the stop when you just go into motor and turn off motor one you'll see that that's for the ones where we want an output where the motor is turned off and um, this one we've got one zero one zero so one being on so this is on one zero and then we want this to be one and this to be zero so we don't want our not gate here so all you have to simply do with that is drag that out and you can leave your not gate out here till maybe you'll use it again for your next program and then you click control c control v you copy that whole thing again you can change this to your motor off at this one because i think that was our next one we wanted one zero one zero um to stay off so you put that in like so so let's just do one more so this had to be one zero let me see one zero and then this one had to be one and this had to be zero so we drag this out and you can see we can use our not gate again you should just drag it over there and that's the next line of our code so you can complete and you do you do a block for every single row so you're telling it what it's doing in every state there and if you wanted a case where um it hits the switch and it starts to reverse back then it's just a matter of doing that chart out again and changing the output so what happens when a certain condition is put into it and uh, that's everything and best of luck trying out that circuit